Hello everyone, this is Shadow Coast, and I will be running through a Legendary Skaven Mortal Empires campaign. So let's get started. New campaign, Mortal Empires. We must preserve this world. We're gonna go with Queek over Stroll for a few reasons. Um, the, the primary one being, when you get a caster, you're obviously going to want to level up the casting talent tree. However, and especially in Legendary Campaign, the army and campaign trees are more important. And for the campaign tree, we specifically are going to be target army upkeep reduction. One of the challenges of Legendary is that you have massive increase in upkeep as you add new lords and armies. So that'll be important. So we're gonna select Queek and get rolling here. Now I'm gonna skip the overall intro, uh, just showing the map and areas of interest. We're going to primarily focus on our immediate provinces around us, securing them, leveling it up, and uh, getting a tier um, first tier army before we really start expanding. The right claw of so, before we start getting into the good stuff, the battles, um, we're going to take a look at the building tree here. Turn off the advisor. So, for those of you who don't know or are unfamiliar with Skaven, their unique mechanic is food. So up here you can see, um, you know, they need food, and each tier of food um, actually has benefits and can have negative consequences if you let it get too low. So when you have 41 to 60 percent food you get plus three growth to all provinces, goes up to plus 10 with some leadership and public order benefits, and then plus 20 with massive leadership and additional public order benefits. If you let it get too low you start having negative growth, negative impact of leadership, um, and then it gets worse. So we get to the red line here, uh, we're in deep trouble because uh, we're not going to be generating income um, and, and battles and, and loot won't, uh, won't be as accretive. So we don't want to let it get it too low. We can generate food in a few ways. There are a few buildings that generate food. Uh, here we can see the Clan Moors headquarters actually generates three food which is nice. But the primary way to generate food is fighting battles. Scave and eat what they kill. So we're going to want to make sure we're constantly fighting. The other unique characteristic of Skaven is their nice interplay between Skaven Corruption and Untainted. Skaven Corruption can have benefits, but if it gets too high, it actually still hurts the Skaven. You see negative public order um, and, and other negative consequences coming from it. So if you look at their talent trees and their buildings specifically, you see an interplay. For example, this is Untainted 1, which cancels out or negates Skaven Corruption. While all their buildings actually add to Skaven Corruption, increasing it. So as we build out our different provinces, we're going to have to balance out increasing uh, and mitigating Skaven Corruption all at once which makes it a very unique race and, and extra challenging, um, especially in Legendary mode. For now, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on building up an army that uh, will allow us to expand fairly quickly. So if we look at these Tier 1 um, options, we could get some income and resources, which also uh, adds some Untainted here for the Obsidian Quarry. We could build a Clan Pit. Um, which will allow us to eventually get Storm Vermin, um, which are our core central army uh, component. Those are going to be our frontline units. And then on the way up you get kind of increased clan rats with spears. I'm going to forgo this in this one since we already have the headquarters which will give us clan rats. We're going to probably be using a lot of clan rats until uh, we can support the Storm Vermin. And just to take a look here, you see that they're 262 upkeep, 250 upkeep, which is considerably more than the 81 upkeep here. The nice thing is Queek has a 50% reduction uh, to upkeep for these units, so they are going to be something that Queek will be um, recruiting throughout the campaign. 
I think what I'm going to go with is Hidden Lair. It'll allow us um, to start generating a little income and also recruit Night Runners, which are the ranged uh, units. If you look at these guys, they're um, they're not too great. If you see melee attack is is horrible, no melee defense, um, but they do have and very low missile damage. But they do have massive massive range. 140 is on the top tier end um, of the range you're gonna get for some of them. Here you see a little more missile damage. Um, but uh, less range. So the reason we're going to get a few of these in the early campaigns is that in the early part of the campaign is that we're going to try to use our front line to secure them, have these guys put some damage on it while we use our other more important units uh, to come around back and really deal some damage. Another reason I wanted to get this um, tree early is really for the assassin. One thing in Legendary is we're not going to have a lot of time to sit around and replenish troops. So we're going to want to have an embedded hero that is going to allow us to replenish troops so we can continuously fight, um, you know, in multiple battles, even within each turn, um, and be prepared for the next turn. So this is going to be our primary tree. Some other aspects to this, you basically get increase to um, range units so they get better. A lot of these we're not going to be focusing too much on the build, um, you know, throughout the, the late game campaign. Uh, it's primarily a, a play to get the assassin in there leveled up to replenish troops. The tier 3 for Skaven has some, some of the best units for tier 3 in my opinion. You have Death Globe Bombardiers. I personally like the Warp Thrower Cannon. It does massive missile damage. You see down there, 118. Um, and then they have the uh, Death Globe Bombardiers, which is a great anti-infantry unit. Let's take a look at that. P uh, Plague Catapult um, is fantastic. Construction Caverns great. It unlocks. Uh, Warlock Engineer, which increases mobility. This is great because Skaven can cover a lot of ground um, once you embed this hero. Here we see Plague Monks. Plague monks. These are a great infantry unit, a very weak armor, so you want to micro them effectively to get around back behind um, the enemy to, to really do a lot of damage. And then you see the Plague Priest. Uh, they they um, have some interesting casting abilities and uh, tree there which can do massive damage so we're going to want to get a few of these eventually the main line unit the main damage dealer for the skaven are the rat ogres again you're going to have to micro them effectively really utilize that charge bonus of 46 which is fantastic for a tier 3 unit this is going to be the core um, component to to our damage dealing um, within the army. So we're going to want to get a few of these. And then Hell Pit Abomination. It's expensive, but it's fun. We're going to get a few of those and check them out. Make sure that uh, we use them more as a tank capacity, soak up damage, keep uh, keep enemy units busy while we circle around with the Rat Ogres to do the massive damage. A few other um, items to note. Plague Monk Sensor Bears basically an enhanced version of the Plague Monks. Um, quite frankly, uh, in my opinion, they're a lot better. They have Frenzy and a few other attributes there, um, and they're doing armor-piercing damage, um, which, which unfortunately Plague Monks don't do. And that'll be important late game when we're facing a lot of forces that have high armored units. And finally, we have the Doom Wheel. It's... Um, I think it's a lot of fun to watch, a lot of fun to micro. It it has limited utility compared to some of the other units here. I, I think for the cost um, of recruitment, the upkeep cost, it's not quite as good uh, compared to some of the other options that um, can be deployed on the battlefield. So that's just an overall look at some of the units here. Um, one thing I will note is uh, we will be, again, balancing um, these different buildings to mitigate and maintain certain level of Skaven corruption 
uh, in any given province. So let's get started. Here I'm going to, let's see, we're going to want to finish off our primary province as soon as possible to start building that up. Um, getting those tier 3 units as quick as possible. I'm going to head over here, finish off Granite Massive. I am going to recruit a few units here. Um, I think I'm just going to go with a few Skaven Spears. These guys are just going to be frontline, soak up damage, keep the enemy busy, um, while I more micro the Storm Vermin to, to do more damage. So one thing to note for the Skaven is that they actually need buildings to focus on their technologies. And so being an important interplay, especially as we get later in the game, where we're going to have to make sure we have the appropriate buildings to get some key integral upgrades. So one of the biggest ones is growth initially. We want to get up to tier 3, tier 4, tier 5 to get those higher end units and create tier 1 armies that are going to be able to um, steamroll our enemies. And so here we need Overseer's Lookout. And if we look at the piece, this will be one of the first things that we're going to build from an infrastructure standpoint. Taskmaster's Platform, um, which gives us public order, then Overseer's Outlook, which will allow us to start um, down this tree. So it'll give us some growth, it'll give leadership to our forces, uh, loyalty, loyalty, especially for the Skaven, isn't too big of a deal because we're going to be managing our food um, rather aggressively. We're going to have to be fighting constantly. So most um, lords will have 8 plus loyalty at any given time. We're not going to sit around a lot. And then we get some public order. The second one will be clan rats. The clan rats are kind of the backbone of the Skaven army. You'll see there's an interesting ability that allow us to spring uh, uh, clan rats um, on our enemies to devastating effect. So we're going to want to level them up and make sure that they have as much armor and melee attack to maximize them. And here we need the clan armory. Now the clan armory is um, will allow us to get storm vermin, uh, etc. We're going to really build this piece out when we secure our second province because in this one I don't necessarily know if we need it because we're going to have our um, clan wars headquarters, our hidden lair, uh, and then I think I'm going to go for growth vets to really get those rat ogres for damage. And of course we're going to get the um, outlook. So that kind of concludes the first turn here. Uh, we'll end that and then we'll fight a quick battle so you can see what it looks like. Here our opening province. So this will be an easy fight. I'm gonna run it. Um, so the the ability I mentioned before is the menace below. It actually allows us to play uh, deploy clan rats. I believe anywhere on the map, a unit of them. These are integral, especially when we're fighting higher tier armies where we can take out their artillery, um, surprise attack, their cavalry charges to mitigate the damage or just pop up behind them to do extra damage. So we'll see that deployed here in a little bit. So let me just get set up. Our storm vermin are, are kind of central core. I'm gonna throw our clan rats over here. Skaven spears over here. These are our ranged. And then our cannon. We don't really need too much of. So this unit is really anti-large. Um, doesn't do much good against 
infantry, as you can see. So let's see how this works. I'm gonna deploy some guys from behind. Have those clan rats come out and attack. These guys circle around. These guys circle around. Alright, so we're gonna have our artillery stop because they're actually doing more damage to our guys. And they are to the other guys. Alright, so as these guys run, I'm gonna wanna kill them. So the more we kill here, the, uh, the more food we're gonna get, hypothetically. So we'll see if that actually plays out. Alright, they're gonna run. Stop these guys. Kind of accelerate the gameplay. See how many we can take. Now, so normally on this one it doesn't matter too much since we're securing a um, province. So I think they're all gonna die anyways. But it's always fun to just kind of clean them up at the end. Perfect. So we just secured our first province, which is fantastic to do. It's only a, a two uh, settlement province, which which is an ideal, um, but it allows us to get our commandment bonus and really start leveling up. Now the nice thing that we can do is actually use food to upgrade settlements we capture. So unfortunately, most Skaven start at level one and you have to deploy food up here um, to level it up. So we could do level three. I'm not gonna do that quite yet. Um, I think I'm gonna take level two. Uh, well, actually, no, I'm gonna keep it at level one for now. And, and just, you know, I don't wanna, I wanna keep these food store levels up the plus 10 growth if we can knock into that will be better. Now one of the interesting things on this percent, it's not actually based off 100. So if you see here, it's 61 out of 105. So every settlement we capture actually increases the food cap. You need more food to, to maintain those settlements. So blanket aggression and expansion uh, could be actually deadly because you know as you add more food required so um, to, to each captured settlement um, that means you're gonna have to keep fighting more and more to generate more food to, to support them and we'll see more of that as we get later in the campaign so let's take a look at a quick look at the talent tree so as I mentioned before one of the reasons we went with Queek is because we want these two um, talent trees. I'm going to pick campaign movement just so we can cover more ground up front. Um, and then here we'll probably focus on um, income from looting or ambush success. I think I'm going to go with ambush success. So one thing that's nice about Skaven is that they can do kind of an auto ambush which we're going to see when we, we, we fight um, later in the campaign. So we're going to want to make sure ambush is pretty high. And then we're going to want to get into lightning strikes. So that'll be great against chaos stacks. It allows us to just attack one army so they can't reinforce. And then the key piece here is we really want the quartermaster. Making sure we get that reduction in upkeep cost. And then renowned and feared. Making it harder for heroes sacked against us. And also giving us another 8% for upkeep reduction. The next tree is the army tree, is what I like to call. We're going to definitely go for pack 
uh, pack leader enhancing clan rats again we see all those upgrades we want to upgrade them they become a decent tiered unit for how cheap they are great cost to effectiveness ratio that we're going to want to capitalize on and then um, further build it out. We have a bunch of 1.1ers. One I'll get into these a little bit later. Um, they're more late game here. And then the nice thing too is that um, here we can, this tree allows us to build out some great aspects up here, making Queek um, really strong and giving us casualty replenishment, which will be key. So I think. I'm not sure if we can get all these or if they're mutually exclusive, um, but we'll take a look at that. Definitely leaning towards upkeep reduction and army replenishment. So that, oh, let's take a quick look. So here, um, we're gonna upgrade. And, you know, I think we are actually gonna have a clan armory here. They already built the base structure. <laughs> We're going to upgrade it, um, the primary reason being we do want to be able to unlock this talent tree where we can start upgrading clan rats um, since they're core to our army. So let me see, we're going to do growth, we want growth and then we're going to need two to get there which I think will be, be okay. So we're going to... We're going to hold off. We're going to get level 3 here um, instead of upgrading this so we can start building out the uh, our rat ogres. And you're going to see how effective they are. So that concludes the first turn, um, first, yeah, two turns of this video stream. I'll be posting more in the upcoming days. Thank you all for listening, and uh, please feel free to comment and subscribe.